Okay, it's extremely important if you're cutting rough boards like I am right now to use shims to support the backside so that it's, there's no rocking on the miter saw fence. If you don't use shims like this and you go to cut like I'm doing right now, this piece is most definitely going to kick back at me as the board wants to uh, bend and flex as you're cutting through it. It's very dangerous. All these boards have been picked specifically for the color and the uh, grain. The best looking ones are going to be the sides. After I have all my parts rough cut to length, I'm just going to straight line rip using my sliding saw. And now I'm going to actually put four pieces together and I'm going to joint that nice edge. And now I can run it along the rip fence to get my width of cut perfectly. Okay, now it's time to put it in the jig and let's see what happens. This is where I discover a major problem. Take a look at this very carefully. You see how it's rocking? It's not quite sitting right. It's not good. Well, I never thought this day would come when I would actually say that the Festool Capex let me down. And it actually let me down in a big way. And I still don't know why this has happened, but it has happened. I've got all these parts that are cut to length and they're all, they're all out of square. You could probably get away with a lot of things being out of square a little bit, but dovetail drawer boxes are not one of them. What I want to do is figure out the best way to fix this problem. So what I did was I'm going to skim off a material from all these boards. I figured out a length that I could cut away to shim out so that I get to the face frame. What I'm going to do is just make it a little bit bigger and it should be good. The depth, it shouldn't be a problem either. I mean, there's some forgiveness in that 18 inch depth. Um, so that's not going to be a huge thing, but not being square would be a huge thing. So I decided um, the lesser of two evils, I'm going to take a little bit off each one. All right, check that out. This is two boards haven't been fixed yet. Look at that. So obviously this is a problem, right? Any way you look at this, it just goes to show you that even if you feel like your um, saws are cutting perfectly, it's probably a good idea just to double check them. Um, and I just took for granted that it was working totally my fault. I should have, I should never just assume things are going to be good. Okay. So the first pass is going to be just splitting the difference. Um, I'm just taking about half of what I need to remove off in this first pass. Now I'm going to flip the board, keeping my jointed side up against the fence to protect it from tear out. And now I'm going to use my stop to cut it to the final length. Do this on all the parts and we'll be ready to go. All right, let's see how this is. I would say that's pretty darn good, right? All right, well, got those squared away, thank goodness. Um, hopefully everything goes together um, nicely. Okay. So for this jig, I use this router. It's a little bit easier to deal with on the router, on the uh, jig, I think. I, I like the comfort of it, I like the grip. And you see how nice it is to be able to just, right? Uh, this part, is put up here so that it's flush here. And then these stops right here, these pretty much don't ever get changed, right? These guys, um, and they reference a 90 degree angle. And then what you do is you put the backer board on. The backer's gonna really control chip out. It It's just big enough so I can clamp it down and it's tight. This part over here is, you can put a piece here to um, just put in there but I find that not having a piece there is actually better because it'll give you a little bit more clamping pressure. The sockets, the pins go in, that's the front piece that's done after. So this is the first step, which is gonna be the side. This is the, called the tail. So you can see here, I've got these variably spaced and that is because I just like the look of it. It's kind of cool. So it's pretty symmetrical. It may not be exactly symmetrical, but it's really close. I have these spaced out here so that I have a little bit of a platform for the router to go on. Also, the router sometimes can drag. 
So sometimes I'll spray um, some lubricant on the router and or the fingers themselves. The vacuum I'm gonna use is the, uh, the Rockler one down there. Yeah, nice. So that's good. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This thing just follows, right, the router. Now the, um, the part that's facing me, that's gonna be the inside, okay? So I can take it, put it in just like that. I don't have to spin the board or anything. And I know the writing is not gonna be facing me. From this side, I like to make my first cut over here and like back out of it so that I get a nice clean cut on that end. And then score the front and then just take it slowly. The next step is to do the pins. Now, if this was a single pass setup, I wouldn't be able to do variable spaced, right? In fact, this particular machine can't even do single pass. I have to get the um, newer version um, upgrade kit. I can get new fingers and all that stuff, um, you know, and a rod that stops it. But again, I like to do the variably spaced. It takes a little bit of time, but it's kind of cool. Um, okay, now what I want to do is just basically change out the sacrificial board and I'm going to put my actual board in there and I'm going to put a piece in the front that's going to register this part. So let me show you that. All right, go ahead and take this, this part here. I can release this. Now I'm going to need to take this off as well, right? And I undo this and I will pull this back, reverse it. So the thickness of my material is 5 eighths of an inch. So I set this right on the 5 eighths of an inch mark. So right in between half inch and three quarter inch is the 5 eighths. And I'm looking on this scale here. Since this is gonna be taken out, I can now use this for the front. And this is just gonna reference um, how far the piece comes out, right? I want the best part facing in, because I'll never see the back and the front, right? So I want the part that's actually nice. Okay, so again, take this. There's stops on this part too, right? So I can only go so far and that registers this. So everything engages exactly like it was before. Now with that in place, it's up tightly here and I can lock this down. And now of course, lock this down. So this is what I was talking about being square. If this wasn't square, I would be getting a gap somewhere, somehow. Either I wouldn't be coming out square here or vice versa, right? This way, I wouldn't be flush here at the end. So there's so many things that need to be considered. One is you gotta have square boards. So now this is good. Now all I need to do is drop this down, make sure that it's good and it's good. So there it is. Now again, this part here only is there for um, a uh, registration, right? I'm not cutting into it. What I like to do is just kind of take little passes. I don't like to take one big chunk at one time. That's how you burn up your bits. I ended up having to put a zip tie on this just so it wouldn't come undone. Okay, um, I mean, you know, this is what I'm talking about by a severe mess. However, I will say this. If I didn't have dust collection, 
than this shroud. I mean, it would be, you know, a hundred times worse. So this is what I'm after, right? I want to make sure that I have a full depth cut. So if you have um, big sockets, sometimes when you're routing them, you can leave little areas that don't get routed. So I just kind of go back and forth, you know, start from the left, go to the right, back out, go to the left, route to the right, back out and just keep doing that. And, you know, basically you're just going in this motion because as you do that, you're going in the correct direction with the router bit, right? If you were to go to the left, it would be going with the, with the direction of the spinning bit and it would shoot it to the left. So you have very little control. Every single board so far has been right on the money, perfectly square according to everything I have set up. So that's awesome. Okay, now, of course, before I put these together, I sand this. Well, these are obviously smaller, so the pin placement is not gonna work right. I'm sure in some situations it might be able to work, but in this situation, it's not. So I need to change the location. Okay, now I have to fill in those spaces right there. One, two. And just cut that off right there. So this just friction fit in here, right? Just tight enough to stay put, but not tight enough that you can't get it in. Oh. So now I can just continue the whole process. Now, one thing I want to make sure I do though, is since that isn't going to line up with these, so I want to change this and I want to do it on this side. And that's going to give me nice clean cuts. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying watching me do um, drawers for the first time. I've never showed it on my channel, so I'm pretty excited that you guys get to see it. It's nice to just keep track of what's what. So I put a line that, that represents the bottom. So I know that's the side that goes up against the rip fence when I do the groove. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some parts. This is gonna be the parts for the, uh, the bottoms. And as you can see, I'm using the uh, rip fence to give me my final width of cut. The sliding carriage makes this so effortless. And now I've got the rip fence pulled back, as you can see. And I'm going to use it as a stop block to cut these parts to length. This works really well. You can see just how quickly I can make these cuts and extremely accurate. Got to lower this down to a quarter of an inch. Got this tape on here to offset the, the height of, from the uh, sled to the table. Now from the space here, that just needs to be uh, one half inch. And this is gonna be for the bigger drawers. For the smaller drawer, I'm actually gonna use a, a little tighter so I can get more interior space height-wise. Uh, since I'm not using undermount slide, I don't need a half inch. Um, and I don't really have a lot of room, so. I'm gonna go less than that. If your riving knife is not lower than your blade, you, obviously you can't do the groove. So that's something to think about. So some of you might be wondering why I don't just put the stack data set in the saw and run it. Well, as you might know, the quarter inch plywood is never quarter inch and honestly, this gives me a much better result when I'm trying to go for a tight fit on a undersized piece of plywood. So this works really well. And it takes me not that much time. It would take me a lot longer to put a stack dado set in the saw. 
so I think this is a great choice. Check to see how it fits and we got a good fit. So as you can see there's not a lot of space and that's what I want. I don't want any rattling. So I go ahead and run all the parts and it's pretty pretty simple. I need to know which ones are going to be the back and which ones are going to be the front, right? Normally what I do is I just pick the ones that have either a defect, maybe one's warped, who knows what. Um, in this particular case, I'm picking these two for no other reason than those ones look really good. And these ones, one's got a stain right there and the other one has a, just a little bit of a cup to it. Now the operation is simple. What I wanna do is I, I just wanna get rid of this bottom section, okay? The thing is, is that I like to put my drawer bottoms on after I'm done building the drawer. That's just the way I like to do it. Um, I like to be able to remove it if there's a problem. Uh, this is a completely optional step. It's just something that I like to do. Since this is where the um, saw blade needs to be in order to be flush, I'm just gonna raise the saw blade up. That means when I cut this, it's gonna be flush. Before I assemble the drawers, I want to put a bullnose on this and I use this big guy right here and that's going to give me an oval shape. Of course, when you're doing any kind of routing with these big bits, you want to make sure you lower the RPM. Okay. So the goal is I actually do want to make sure I take a full cut. I'm not going to end up with a flat spot, in other words, where it's not cutting. So I do have some sample boards I'm going to use as my scrap pieces. Just to test it though, this needs to be shimmed out enough to accommodate that snipe. So let me show you what's going to happen if we don't do that. You know, I just want to show you this up close because uh, this snipe is obviously something that everybody's going to be facing at some point in time. So check this out. To loosen up your fence. I take these shims. These are actually table saw data set shims. Put them back behind my bolts and lock it down. And now after a few setups, I am getting really good results. And also the um, roundover is centered. And that's really important to me as well. So now I can go ahead and run all the parts as you can see, I use the um, hold downs here. That's just to give me consistent feed pressure down and uh, also puts the router bit a little further back, which is nice. Um, okay, now we can clearly see this lip right there. So what I need to do is drop this height of this down so that when I run the bull nose on this piece, it'll be below this surface right all right so to remove this i'm going to go ahead and use the joiner and this is going to be about a 1 16th pass which is actually a pretty heavy pass for the joiner but this works really well the table saw would have been a lot more work to do this as i would have had to change the rip fence for every part as you can see a little final sanding before I start assembly. So I started with 100 grit and then I switched it to 180. If the maple is left with like 100 grit, it'll finish nicely, but it'll soak in more. You'll, you'll need more coats on it. So it's better to burnish it a bit. So um, 180 grit works perfect for this. These guys are gonna be glued. So if they're glued and they're not square, it's not gonna be good. So they should be glued and you should use a square to make sure that they're actually square. And this can be varied a little bit, but I just don't want a ton. So that's about it right there. So this is the other side, that'll be next. Carefully. Put it in one at a time. All right. 
not quite flush there. All right, I'm gonna put a clamp on this just to pull it a little bit tighter at the front. It's not bad, but there's a little bit of a space there. Let's see how this is. I mean, that thing is pretty darn dead square right there. Yeah, that thing's dead square. Taking some of this maple and I'm just sanding it so I can make some wood filler that will match the maple really well. It's always nice to have this kind of stuff and you know, you just never know when you're gonna want a, a little bit of a wood filler and I use maple an awful lot so it's good to have. I like to put the dust in these things when I'm done with them, these Craig containers. So. That's it. Should be more than enough. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So you can see here, it's pretty good, but there's some little chip outs here, here and there. A few spaces here and there, nothing big, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill all this stuff up with the filler and then I will sand it. So that'll be good. Okay, now to do this, what I do is I just take my glue and I'm just gonna run it on the joint. Let me just take this. This just happens to be one of the messier jobs, but that looks really good. Very nice. This has had plenty of time to dry, so it should be good. Let's go ahead and sand everything. Everything looks really good. Okay, I think you guys will agree. I don't think there's anything more satisfying than sanding dovetail joints. These look absolutely beautiful. It's amazing what a little sanding does, huh? Totally different look when it's sanded. And this is just 100 grit. To finish up the sanding, I'm using 180 grit, and this is gonna get it ready for the finish coats. The next episode, I'm gonna show you how I put the bottoms in, as well as make a custom hanging file folder jig. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time.